Hi folks, welcome back to my channel. In this video, we'll be talking about reusing 3D models in 3GS and specifically in the context of working with 3GS using uh, the framework integrations like uh, Angular, React, or Vue. Now, as an extension, we'll also explore how these framework integrations like kind of like the approach they take uh, to uh, writing your 3D scenes craft can help solve the problem as well as making uh, working with these 3D models a little bit easier. Like uh, you can declaratively show and hide parts of the models or modify parts of the models by using props or inputs. Um, I'll be using Angular 3 for this video, but the concept applies to any like framework integrations that kind of like use the renderer approach. Uh, so let's get started. Uh, for the example project, we'll be using uh, this example from React 3 Fiber. So this project renders some shoe models, right? Uh, the shoe models is loaded once and uh, rendered twice and encapsulated inside of this shoe component that is rendered twice here. And then the shoe component accepts some props so that we can modify and uh, make it display like we have like a pair of shoes, one for left uh, left foot and one for the uh, right foot. Um, so uh, that's what we're going to be using and uh, model after. So what I have here is a plank uh, Angular CLI project. I have the shoe model in my public folder. So let's add Angular 3 with ng add. So go down to the terminal. I'm going to run npx ng add angular 3 at better. Right, we're going to pick replace app component template with ngt canvas. All right, now we have that. Let's go back. And now we have a, like kind of like an experience component, like a scenes graph that get gets us started. All right, now that we have angular 3, I want to add uh, angular 3 soba as well. Um, so we have like proper utilities to work with uh, with this shoe model, right? So in the command line, we can run npx and gg angular three add soba, and from soba, I'm going to use the controls and I'm going to use staging. So this allows the schematic to install the correct peer dependencies to use with angular three soba entry points, right? So with all of this in place, let uh, restart the server. I'm gonna just minimize this one. So let's make sure that the schematics were invoked uh, correctly. So I'm gonna try to use the uh, camera controls here, right? And then uh, we will also use the NGTS environment to set up some like basic basic lightings. And I'm gonna use the preset of CD, right? And uh, before I forgot. Let's do an ambient light as well with the intensity of math not pi. And to do that, we need to extend the three namespace instead of just those three. All right, with this in place, let's go back to the app. Oh, there we go. Oh, so it's small, so let's fix that. Let's go back to app component and uh, let's make this take up the entire uh, viewport with height 100vh and now we have uh, the entire scene uh, the camera controls work because we can grab the camera and move that around let's make sure that the lighting works by changing this material to standard material which is a material that can reflect lights so now we see that our cube is um, reflecting light and it has dimensionality Great. So let's work on our shoe component next. So let's create a new file called shoe.component.ts. Um, it's going to be a shoe component selector with app shoe, standalone shoe with uh, an empty template for now. And it's going to be custom element schema with chain detection. All right, with this, we're going to use uh, inject GLTF from Angular Soba, and we're gonna point to the uh, the shoe GLTF uh, assets, right? With this in place, we're gonna use if. So GLTF returns a signal. So we can 
and it, this signal is no by default. So we're fetching something, we're fetching some external assets. So it's no by default. And then when it has um, data, we're going to use the primitive element from Angular 3 along with the R's object. Uh, I mean the R's directive, and we're going to render the gltf.scene. Usually uh, with uh, gltf, uh, scene is the top level uh, 3D object that encapsulate or contain all of the models. So we're going to render the scene with NGT primitive. So with this in place, let's go back here. Let's remove the mesh, put in the app shoe, and just remove everything here and save and go back. Uh, give it a little bit of time to refresh and now we have the shoe model on the, um, on the scene graph. Right, so now with the shoe model rendered, kind of like a logical thought process would be to render another shoe component so that we have a pair of shoes instead of just one. Now, but to do that, we need to add some inputs uh, to the shoe component to control like the position, the rotation, and the scale of the model. All right, let's do that. So we go to shoe component, let add position input. And default is going to be that, uh, 0, 0, 0, so is the default position for the object. Uh, we also have rotation, also 0, 0, 0, but it's going to be an NGT Euler. And then we have a scale of that as well, so it's going to be just one. And now we're going to buy, uh, buy these inputs to the model using the parameters uh, input on the NGT primitive. So now we have position, scale, and everything else. So I'm going to just uh, clean this up a little bit. So now we have um, inputs. We can go back to this and we're going to kind of like put in some input. So I'm going to put this at precision uh, on A5. Let's see how it looks. It doesn't look much different, but it's, it's moved back a little bit. Next is I want to rotate this by uh, that. And it's going to be upside down. So now we're going to scale by negative 1 to like bring it back right here. But now it is like it's rotate so that it is the left foot instead of like the initial uh, right foot. Uh, I'm going to change this a little bit by 0.5 so they look like, yeah, they pointed out a little bit. Cool. So now we have uh, this one. Let's create another one. Let's render another shoe component uh, for the right foot. Save that. And now we have the right foot, but where is our left foot shoe component? Well, so this is the problem with try to reuse the 3D models uh, with uh, just NGT primitive. All right, so let's go back to the shoe component. Okay, so what happened here is even though we render multiple instances of the shoe component, these shoe component instances reference the same model, the same object, right? Now, um, 3GS renders the model once, or like more accurately, it renders an object with the same unique ID once, regardless of how many times the user tries to add this object to the scenes graph. Well, clearly on our template, we have two shoe component rendered. And so the models are being added to the scene twice, but only the most recently added one gets rendered. And that is the right shoe. So if we want to test this theory, we can bring uh, this kind of little shoe component with these inputs after and now we can see that it is the, the left shoe, the left foot. Right, so what is the solution here? Right, let's let's look at this tool. Now, if we load our shoe model, oh, not this one. Uh, if we load our shoe model here, right, the tool will generate this, this code for us. It, it is a component. It breaks down the model into multiple parts and reuse the geometries and the materials, the textures, whatever else it finds in the model. So this, excuse me, this ensures that the model can be rendered multiple times because these like group mesh are unique. Each time it renders, right? 
but without duplicating the geometry or the materials. So we save a lot of um, uh, computing uh, or a lot of like uh, route trip back to the GPU, back and forth with the GPU, while still uh, render this or uh, reuse this um, model um, information or model assets. All right. So another benefit of this uh, approach is that each part of the model is a separate element, which means that we can modify each part in isolation, or we can uh, like conditionally display them, show, hide them, give them props, change their colors, whatever, whatever we want to do with each part of the shoe, we can do that with this approach. Right, so even though this is for React 3 Fiber, we can use the same concept for Angular 3 or any framework integrations with the uh, custom renderer approach. So I'll turn on types, right, and copy both the types and the template right here and back to our application. So I'm gonna go back to my shoe. I'm gonna throw in the types first. Let's import the thing that this needs. So I'm gonna do S3 here, right? So now we now that we have the type, let's assert that our GLTF will be a signal of GLTF result, uh, result or no. Cool. Next is to throw in just a template, and we're gonna model after this template using NGT element. So we have an NGT group, and it is, it has this pose no, right? Inside of here, there's a bunch of meshes with these properties, so cast shadow to that. And now Copilot, or in my case, Super Maven is gonna help us fill, fill this out. Uh, stripes, like band, and last one, patch. And that's it. So now we have uh, this, cut a template, oh, before I forgot, uh, cut a template. And you see that in the React version, the props or the inputs to this component is spread on the group. Uh, this means that uh, our input, our position, rotation, and scale inputs is gonna go on the group. So I'm gonna do that right here. All right, now with this in place, without changing anything from the experience component, I'm gonna go back to my uh, to the running app. You see that now we have two shoes instead of just one. And it looks a little bit uh, off initially, right? Let's change the camera. Let's move the, the initial uh, position of the camera around a little bit. So we do camera position of uh, let's move to the right a little bit and then back up a little bit and then the field view to be 35 so now we have uh, this uh, this look of the pair of shoes great All right so now we uh, so to close this out, uh, let's change the colors of the shoes now before we can change the color of the shoes we need a new input. So let's add that input and we call this a color with input default to white and it's gonna be color representation, right? Uh, we need to also locate um, like the, the correct mesh that makes up the part of the shoe we want to change color for. So in this case, I wanna change this like upper, uh, the mesh of the shoe and that mesh, that's object, is this one right here. So if I comment this one out, you see that the shoe doesn't have that part, that upper um, uh, portion. So let's put this back. Now, to change the color of the upper, we need to change the color of the material. Now the same thing applies here. If we just change the material color, right? There's a way to just change the material color. So uh, in, in Angular 3, there's an NGT value construct or element with the raw value. Now you can give this a color and then you say attach to material.color. So this means that this NGT value will use this value to attach to the material.color property on the mesh. So it effectively changed the color of this material right here. So if we just do this, then the instance 
of the material is still the same across all shoe components. Even though we render twice, we still reuse the same material, right? And this will apply to the same instance, which means that we cannot change color. They will look the same. So to prove that, I'm going to go back here. I'm going to say, hey, I want you to have a color of green. I want you to have a color of red. So let's go back. And I have red on both because I said red after. If I say this green, then I have green on both. Okay. All right. So what do we do? Well, now we have that NGT mesh here. We can actually attach a material as a child to it the same way we do with NGT value. And we know that from the type, they are uh, standard material. And now we can create a standard material and attach the color or assign the color input to the color property on the material. And let's remove this mesh. Save. And now they have different color because now the material are different instances between shoe components. But the textures are gone. So what do we do with the textures? Well, this is the part where you have to manually uh, like console log out the bare bone standard material and compare that against the material from the model and to kind of like figure out the differences. I have already done that for you. So in here we need the AL map or um, ambient occlusion map on that shoe on the materials we have a mesh AL map as well uh, there's a normal map there's a roughness map and metalness map we also need the metalness set to one and the uh, normal scale and save that and back here now we have the texture back on our shoes all right all right I'll see you guys in the next one